Now, if you've been watching some of the videos, you're up to date on the fact that bars and restaurants have been closed here for almost 40 days. And just Monday, November 23rd, they open back up. So we're gonna take a walk around the old city, show you what's going on, and see if there's any action in any of these bars. We got our first one right up here, La Taberneta, which I've always liked. It's a nice little place. You can see people out on the terrace here. And so the new rules are basically that all the bars and restaurants can open up again from six in the morning when our curfew ends, and they have to close by nine o'clock or 9.30. The terraces are 100% open, there's no limit, and on the inside there's a 30% limit on that capacity. So nobody can be really bunched together. The other big thing is that after about six o'clock, it's only open for dinner. And now when they made the ruling that they were going to open up, a lot of people were saying, well maybe some of the bars won't even open just because of the different restrictions here. See, one of my favorite places right there. We got the signs up, it's closed. So that's really unfortunate that we got a lot of these places closing down, but that was one of the big things that everybody was complaining about, you know? Uh, were they going to be able to make it to the, end of the, to the end of the year or even to the end of the pandemic? And so there, you see a lot of these smaller places closing up unfortunately so we're going to kind of try to see what's open what's unfortunately closed and and just some action that's going around we're also in a very touristy section right now of the gothic quarter this is puerta ferrisa which has all the shops if you've been here you'll know it We're heading down the Carrel del Pi, which is closer towards Santa Maria del Pi, famous church in the Gothic Quarter. And you can see the croissant place is open again. And they've got some tables out in the street. And that's one of the big things that before the closures happened, they actually opened up some seating for people on the outside. So usually there's not as many seats outside. There's only three tables, but usually there's not as many seats. And a lot of these bars got permission to have more space out on the terraces or even just in the streets. And even if you get to other parts of the city of the Eshampla, the newer area, you can see that parts of the streets are actually closed off and that tables are put in what would have been the streets or at least what would have been in the parking. You can see we got a beautifully sunny day and we're coming up on that Plaza del Pi and we got some of the more famous bars in the Gothic Quarter around here and it looks like people are getting right back to the action. <laughs> Patapas, Bar del Pi, these are the bars that are open with terraces in this plaza. You can see behind me that there's people out here. And this is something I noticed Monday and even yesterday a little bit. So I wanted to get around and walk around. Uh, a lot of people were worried that people would be scared maybe to get back into the bars or restaurants. And you can see that now, especially in a place like Barcelona, people, you know, they're always outside. And this is a place where we just live on the outside and getting back to just sitting down in a bar, something, you know, maybe really important to a lot of people, meeting up with a few people. Now, there are those rules on the terraces that while it's 100% capacity, you can only have four people to a table and the tables have to be separated by at least two meters. So those are the rules that they have out here. And just again, you can see that plaza a little bit. Some ladies out there taking in the sun. And we're right next to the 
to the church. Santa Maria del Pi. We got some other bars over here in a smaller little plaza. This lecker place I've wanted to try out for a little bit now. It's got like pancakes and waffles and, and all sorts of different things. Don't know if Gabriel's closed. It's got some signs up for rent on the other side. It's usually more of a lunch place, but in the past it would have been, it would have been open here. This is always a nice little plaza. You can see it's a little bit off the beaten path, a little bit quieter. You can see that there's no tables set up at all. Now keep in mind it's about 11.30, so it's that perfect kind of mid-morning coffee or sandwich time that we have over here. We're walking in some of the side streets just off of La Rambla. I think we're gonna go check out the Plaza Real, which is the big, big Spanish plaza we have here in Barcelona. And it's just filled with bars, filled with different restaurants. A little early for lunch, but we'll see if these places are open now at least, and if anybody's on the inside. Ferran Street, and we're coming up to the spot where there's just a bunch of different Irish pubs. You see, these are closed, obviously, way too early now. Uh, but in the past, these would have been open at this point already. And while we're just walking here, getting up to the Plaza Real and a nice little entrance for you. Uh, if you haven't done so already, think about subscribing to my channel. What I'm trying to do with the absence of tourism right here is, is basically bring Barcelona to you. So if you want to get around Barcelona uh, and see what's going on while well, we can't get in, subscribe and you'll see more videos. And let me know with a comment below what you think about these types of videos. I'm checking out the GoPro today. Haven't really done many videos like this. Haven't done any videos like this. Uh, but let me know if it helps you kind of at least feel like you're here. Coming in, get behind me right there. Beautiful views into that Plaza Real. And we've got Quinza Nitz over here, uh, which is probably one of the most famous bars in general. And we'll see, it's open, see how many people are over here. Now this is a restaurant that's up in all sorts of guidebooks. So normally at this hour, you would see people out here having brunch, having breakfast, coffees, whatever. You see there's nobody right now, still setting up the tables. And then on the other side, you've got Canarias, which has a few more locals just right here. We'll get into the plaza. See, there's more people. And again, just an incredible, incredible day. Out here, you can actually see that all the, the lights are up in the plaza already, all those Christmas lights. Those aren't gonna be turned on until this weekend. I think it's actually Friday they do that. And I've always thought that's kind of funny. They put it on, they turn them on right around uh, Thanksgiving. And that's always kind of in the States, the time that we can start even thinking about Christmas. But here, when you don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I always thought that was interesting that a uh, that they kind of had that set up. Now the lights have been up for a month now. They put them up in October. And I think maybe that was just kind of get a little Christmas cheer with everything that's going on. But you can see the Plaza Real right here. 
again, all these bars behind me, all these restaurants, or even just places for some drinks, would normally be open, would be packed. This is a spot that during the season, especially for champions or any of the big, big games, uh, these places just get absolutely packed. Barcelona just passed on to the, to the playoffs in champions. So that would be something to draw people in normally, but obviously without people in the stadium, it's what we see. Incredible views. This is one of my favorite places just to walk through. see a lot closed right down here getting up to another street now uh, which is usually just filled with a bunch of different restaurants and things and has a lot more going on as you can see these places lechuga pizza shop probably too early for pizza right now caracoles one of the oldest bars left in barcelona and they've got that iconic They've got that iconic uh, rotating chicken just right there. Since 1835, this has been open. One of those kind of staple places here. And we can see that, wow, a lot less going on right now. There are some bars that aren't going to be open until a little bit later right here. Uh, and I'm even blanking on the name of the street we're on right now. Right? It's been that long since doing tours and walking down here, realistically. Um, I'm trying to think about it right here. I can tell you a little bit more about it historically than even the name right now. Uh, but this is one of those places that became so packed and so famous back in the 50s and 60s when the, the States was docking in the Barcelona ports and all the the seamen, all the Navy members were coming in, and this is where they would just go out and get absolutely hammered. See, a lot more closed off than what it normally would be. Right behind us. Escudayers, that's the name, Escudayers, which leads us right out into the Plaza George Orwell. You can see things are open again. This is always one of the better places to come and grab a coffee, grab a little beer or something like that. We've got Oviso in the back over behind me. All sorts of different little places and all a bunch of different little tables to come around and enjoy in this place again. If you've been here, this place would be absolutely packed. I'll head up some of these little side streets. kind of funny everybody staring at the at the camera it's almost like they've never seen someone filming in the city before it's been so long without tourism they forgot what it used to look like coming up on this Avigno street we're gonna head up Cervantes and pass by one of my favorite bars, Bar Cervantes. Check it out, see how they're doing. Now this is one of those places I always recommend to people. 
Uh, I don't know, there's not too much special special about it. The sandwiches are really nice. They do a really nice tortilla filled with different vegetables or whatever. And uh, have some nice offers for coffees. But outside of that, it's just one of those places you know you really, you really like. It looks like they have a little bit more space on the outside. Here. Great to see that back open again. As you can see behind me, they've got some tables on the other side of the street, which is something they didn't have before. There you go, there's Cervantes. We're gonna swing around to get over to the Carre de la Ciutat. It's actually one of the oldest streets and basically where the, some of the original Roman roads ran through. There's a bunch of different bars around here. And I actually used to live just right on the other street over here from where we are. So I know this place pretty well. A bunch of different bars around. A lot of them have been here for, for a while now. Lady was just waving. I don't know if there was someone behind us, didn't see anyone, or she was just waving at the camera. So we've got Ciutat on the other side. We've got Plaza de San Jauma, that government square. You can see kind of everything going down. You got Tales or Thales, however you want to call it, right here, the place I used to go to. Quite a bit back for some sandwiches. Got some good craft beer selections. Get in and see. All right. A nice little plaza right here. Everything set up. See that? Just right out there. You know what we'll do is we'll jump down to the next street and we'll check out one of the more beautiful areas in Barcelona. Hello. Hello. Got some new fans. Check this out, I always love this right here. Just kind of up behind us, all the different flags. You can see. Oh, and it looks like La Bodega is open up. We'll go say hello. See how they're doing. This is one place you don't want to miss when you're in Barcelona. Bodega de la Palma. You can see that right there. Again, outside seating that normally isn't around. We've got great interior just right here. You can check that out. One of my favorite places. Maybe I'll come back here for a coffee in a little bit, but let's go check out this little corner where we can see the end of the Roman walls. And there's also some really nice bars over there that I always recommend kind of take a seat, just sit out there and just really picturesque, getting a little bit of idea of, like I said, that old Roman wall, one of the last parts to it. Give you a view of that. That's pretty cool. Part of the Roman wall that's just been turned into hotels. And this is one of just the most beautiful streets right here. Whenever you take people down Yedo, they always just love 
the plants, the decorations on all of the balconies. I'll get, a, get around to show you this. Maybe you could see it behind me before, but just right in there. Hopefully that comes out for you. You can see it. And there's just a little bit of a decline here. We're heading out, basically leaving what would have been that old Roman city. Let's see as we walk on down. You see parts of the wall just right in here coming out. And then you've got that last tower of the Roman wall. And basically the sea would have been starting just right out here. And it doesn't look like Babel's open. Usually in that plaza right behind me. I've got some nice tables out. Babel's just right over here. Like you've got one of the best places to kind of sit out and check everything out. You can see the Roman wall right behind me. Get in over here. You can see that. And like I said, this is one of those places you just love to kind of come in and sit. So we walked around a little bit and I hope you got to see a little bit more of Barcelona. Like I said, bringing you Barcelona while you can't come here right now, just let you know kind of what's going on and everything. Like I said before, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more about Barcelona and what's going on here in Spain during the coronavirus. And give me a like, or give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought about the video. I'll give you some more if we get some good responses.